Okay, you probably have noticed from the grading in discussion six that uh, you're not seeing the rubric being used. And that's because, you know, by now you should understand what I'm actually looking for. Now, I'll still make the comments of what is good and what uh, things you probably missed out or improved. That is going to continue. Uh, looking at this week's discussion, it has to deal with the Emperor Charlemagne. And this is the first emperor really in Europe since the last Roman Empire in the Western Empire. Um, who the hell was that anyway? So, you might have noticed when uh, looking at the grades for discussion six that um, the rubric seems to be missing in action. Well, the reason for that is I believe that by now you should know exactly what I'm looking for. You know, doggone it, you know how to do in notes uh, correctly, uh, responding to two students and doing two paragraphs, at least 200 words, unless it was called for to do more than two paragraphs. So, that is going to continue for uh, the rest of the semester for the majority of you in this class. Now, when we're looking at discussion in seven, this is discussed the political organization of the empire created by Charlemagne. How did he rule? Why did he not survive after his death? So this is a three-part question. So that means you're going to have to have three paragraphs. Now, Charlemagne will become the first emperor in Europe since uh, Caesar, uh, Romulus Augustus that fell from the empire in 476. Now, political organization, what I'm looking for is how he organized that organization uh, using the Misi Dominici. Also, the uh, what was the purpose of the counts? How did he rotate them? And what was the reason for that? And how basically did he rule uh, his empire? You, this is where sometimes you could bring the Pope into it, in which he uh, was crowned Emperor of the Germans. And this uh, probably uh, served more of the church than probably Charlemagne, but you know, Charlemagne also benefited from that uh, crowning. And then the last part is, why did it not survive after his death? Well, what you have to look at, and what students have done in the past, and incorrectly, they blame it on his sons. It's not his sons, it's his grandsons. He only had one surviving son, and that was Louis the Pious, which uh, historians would say he made a better monk anyway as an emperor. But after his death, it passes to those three sons. So you need to tell the reader who are those three sons by name, and uh, the Treaty of Verdun, what was specifically in the Treaty of Verdun. So, um, a little bit more this week than uh, last week. Uh, and as before, you could always send me your discussion that I could peruse over before 4 p.m. on Thursday. Let's have a great week.